If you are new to QReader, where do you encounter regular expressions of the need to use regular expressions? Most of the time you don't have to deal with them, but uh, if you do, let's say that the number one place where you'll find it is perhaps working with a new parser or, or modifying a, uh, a parser with a DSM editor. So I'm going to take this login here from my uh, pfSense at home and I'm going to view it in the DSM editor. That puts the, the payload in there and uh, this is a record for the destination IP. We want to capture that 192.168.100 so we should see it. Uh, actually is the source IP, not the destination. So let's actually go here and look for source IP right here. We're going to override that expression. I already have the regis and I did a dedicated video that goes step by step on how you do this. How you search in, in a very strict form an IP address and uh, the capture group will be in this particular case capture the only one that it is is the capture group one and again it's the only one because this question mark column says that these parentheses are for grouping not for capturing but again that is covering the other video so this is what i would say that is the number number one place where you will have to use a regular expression where you want to modify a parser or a creating one Perhaps the second case where you will need regular expressions in QReader is when you want to extract additional properties that the original parser is not doing. You can do that in the DSM editor, but you don't have to. You can do it from here by going into the actual log, and this log is very simple. There's not much that you can extract, but if there were, you will go here under where it says extract property, and you will go into you will give it a name of the property that you want and you will specify the regex in here that you will be performing the actual uh, search right as you can see is also firing very nicely here as well place where you will find regular expressions are in the notation of the rule on the test conditions of the rule some some of those in the test definition has AQL statements. Let's, let's find all the ones that have uh, AQL statement. Uh, quite a few. Let me search by here by name, complement that by doing uh, I believe that is system uh, owner is one of the ones that have a regular expression. Yeah, let's take a look at this one on Windows. And if we take a look at the logic of it, then the test conditions, uh, we'll see these are not, okay, here it is. Typically it's, it's next to the word matches. And here's a regular expressions, you know, asterisk, which is any character, zero or more, non-greedy, and then uh, escaping the forward slash, and then boom, all this stuff, and then similar at the end. So that's a regex right there as well. So since you have followed the teaching here on regular expression and now you know it, notice that when you are looking into uh, any of these fields like rule name, you can put a textual thing or you can put a regex as well. And you also find regular expressions on the next gen if we go here or where all the rules are on detection and response center and let's focus on the rules that are going to be KQL only and let me search for one of those uh, rules I sorted them by name and um, let me I believe that this one is this is KQL but inside the KQL you see the syntax for extracting a regular expression. Right? And now that you know this, you can understand what is it that this is actually doing. It's extracting from the payload of the log some particular fields. For completeness on this short video, I want to mention that 
the there are two differences in regular expressions format. One is the old, the oldest, most one is uh, the Java one, and there are standards that are followed by Python, which are more more modern. There's a slight difference between the two, and it's unlikely that you will encounter one that works on classic curator that does not work on, for example, on next gen on KQL. But if you want to be sure, as we have gone through the usage of the Regex 101 uh, tool, you can put your, uh, whatever is your log that you are testing, you put, and I'm using the same uh, Regex that we use for looking into an IP address and it found, it, it, it captured in Capture Group 1 what we precisely wanted. But if you want to make sure that it does work in Java, well, you select this option in here, and as you can see, it works exactly the same. But if, when in doubt, you can compare your sources in here. I hope that this is uh, this will be probably the end of my uh, videos on, on regular expression. This is something that you will learn and will use for the rest of your career. Uh, and it's something that is very unintuitive. Well, it's always unintuitive, but once you get a grasp of it, it's like um, like everything else, that it becomes a lot easier. And if you practice it enough, it will become second nature. And even it's a nice challenge for you to not only do it, but also make sure that uh, that you do it in an efficient in an efficient way as well, and also a robust way. Like you, as I mentioned in the in the capture an IP address, I can do this in in much less cycles and make it uh, less robust. But if you want to make sure that things do not break down the road, and what you are capturing in here is just an IP address, not anything else, as you can see, uh, then uh, I think that you will learn that. And there's the, the remember there's a cheat sheet that I that go along with these videos. Links is are, are on the video description. And um, with that, good luck with Regex. I'm sure you'll you will if you invest a good one, maybe two days at most, you are gonna master this and you will put it behind once and for all.